Hey there, everybody. It sounds like there's 51 of you here, around there. Uh, happy to have you here today. So I'm just talking about creating a positive online community around your brand for your game companies and for indie devs and things like that. So with no further hesitation, let's go forward. So a little bit about me, I'm social media manager and community manager for the game industry. If you have any questions throughout this, feel free to shoot a tweet at Certainly Social as well or after the presentation is over and I can answer them as best I can. So here's my story. I was a teacher before for social studies and English as a second language. I taught grades 7 to 12, then moved into doing audio design for games. I did 15 games, uh, mostly in casual, handheld, iPhone kind of stuff. And then moved into doing social media management is that was becoming more popular and with my leadership skills from teaching it was a good fit and so now I do community management in and around games and the interactive space. Here's my background. Um, so currently I'm a social media and community manager for Hero Engine as well as Merging Media which is a transmedia conference and the ones previous to that, lower than that are um, ones from the past, it's just straight from my excuse me, LinkedIn profile so uh, that, that information will be there as well. So a little bit of what I do. So in the communities that I work with, I work to support the community members there, promote the organizations I work with, offer outside perspective, because sometimes you've got uh, community members who don't necessarily get on very well with each other, create content around brand values like mission statements and things like that, I maintain a positive community so that new people, when they come in, they feel welcome and want to join. So what I do is listening and reading 60% of the time. Uh, we've got uh, two ears and one mouth, so should we should be listening twice as much as we are uh, speaking. I really believe that, and I added another 10% on that because I think it's that important. I spend about 20% of my time helping people and 20% active leadership. I have some content creation there as well that I pop into the active leadership. So how is community maintained? Community does not automatically maintain itself. Like an old car, if nothing is done with it, it ends up being like that. Your community will become a mess and wrecked and nobody wants to be there anymore and get filled up with spam. So you have to make sure you take care of your community and uh, lead it in a strong way. Doing it on social media means it's all public as well. People search out your company, so you have to make sure it looks great and inviting and welcoming for people. So how exactly is it done? The foundations for building a positive community. And the values that I encourage in all the communities I work with are inclusion, engagement, empowerment, humor, and creativity. So inclusion. So welcome them. So that's uh, kind of step one is to help them get involved. And once you're welcoming them, that can mean some simple things like saying hi to new people who come to your page or featuring new people, saying, hey, Remember number 382 or whatever, and then say their name, first name. You don't usually have to go for the last name. Um, and just welcome them. I mean, they may not see it because Facebook pages can no longer tag people, but um, you'll get, uh, it kind of helps to build that community feeling for being inclusive and welcoming. So be where they are. So make it easy to find the community and welcoming team in multiple places online, not just main website. So you have to make sure that you go where the people are. Facebook's really good for that because there's, well, like one-sixth of the world by August supposed to be a billion people on Facebook. So it's a great place to start if you're going to have a community. I would definitely go there. And then create content wherever you're doing it that is welcoming and friendly. And so by doing that, you will allow people to let their guard down and trust and be themselves. And that's really what people want to do in community is just be themselves and interact with uh, your brand in a comfortable, welcoming, friendly way. Help them to join in. So encourage people to ask themselves, how can I get involved? If a conversation starts on one social network, don't start by automatically telling them to contact you outside, as this may lose them. So if they are on Twitter and you say, hey, we're barely ever here, please contact us on Facebook, they probably won't. Um, you have to make those walls as few and far between as possible. So that if you are asked a question on Twitter, answer on Twitter. I mean. Uh, if, if it needs to be private, go into direct messages, then email, but if you can keep it within that ecosystem, it's going to work better and you're going to get more inclusion. Um, same with Facebook. People answer questions on the wall 
if you uh, ask questions on the wall, sorry, and if you answer them on the wall, it's public so people can see that this is a safe place to ask these questions and they can have other questions asked there. The only time I will get them to move off to another place, if it's tech support related, um, like the Hero Engine I do this, because a lot of the questions I'm not a tech support guy, so I uh, just don't understand that stuff. It's a game engine, it's beyond my, uh, my understanding for all that stuff, but uh, I can absolutely help them get on to the person that they need to talk to through email. And so that's when I'll just like, pass them on that way. But absolutely, hey, don't just send them straight there, say, hey, can we clarify, and then send them. Okay, so engagement. So start up conversations, this is very important. Uh, social media is all about engaging people. So if you are working, like I said, in a news feed, then you are not going to be getting uh, any of the benefits of what social media is. Um, that's not how it works. Please avoid doing that for your own sanity and for the good of your well, the money you're spending to create this stuff and uh, build conversations and build engagement. So welcome with a hug. So again, this is I'm just saying. So right now, if you want to, while we're talking, you can tweet at me or use hashtag all dev conference. I'll check when we're all done and uh, I'm just you know, practicing what I preach basically, welcoming you with a hug, you listeners who are here. So, how to keep people engaged. So, support the flow of ideas between people. So, basically, setting up conversations and then they can talk to each other. And so, by doing that, you're going to be creating community and the people will get to know each other. And that's really important um, because people can be kind of mean to each other when they're strangers. Um, they can also be mean when they get to know each other too, but that's uh, your job as a community manager to keep that stuff positive and flowing and call people out on being not cool with each other, right? So uh, you're all dealing with adults for the most part, I'm sure, um, but you do have to be keep in mind that these people need to be respectful of each other because it looks bad on your brand for one, um, but also it uh, makes other people who come who are new and they see that stuff and they're just like, why would I want to get involved here? And they won't, they won't engage. So community news and current events, so you can uh, kind of share that stuff. You can, if someone in your community on your Facebook page or Twitter is doing something really cool, pass it on. Um, contest, crowdsource content. So you can bring stuff together from your community and highlight that as well, like in contests. And I've done some stuff before, I think it's the next slide here, that uh, like creating videos together or a contest based on that. Um, inspiring questions and casual and fun questions. I'm going to go over more details in these next slides. So, so community news, current events. This was when I was at the IGDA. I started this hashtag, IGDA.org slash game jobs is where the details are. The hashtag is just hashtag game jobs on Twitter. And uh, it's used by the industry, the game industry, for uh, job postings. So there's a, uh, excuse me, um, there is a complimentary one called game hires. So game jobs is for people who are looking for jobs, so you search there. So if you are looking to hire somebody, you post to Game Jobs. If you are looking for a job, post your stuff to Game Hires, and people who are uh, looking to hire will be looking on Game Job on Game Hires. So that's pretty helpful. Crowdsource content and contests. So, and this is for when I was with the IGDA, a uh, crowdsource contest for tickets to the IGDA Summit. And so these are some of the submissions from people for something at the summit. And after these were all submitted, one of the, of the users, whoever was voted to be the best, and there was a, also uh, the executive director of the IGDA, Gordon Bellamy, and some of the other people from the board were involved in judging who would win. And uh, then they got to come to the IGDA summit. They got a free ticket and to be in a video with me, which, you know, it's a prize. Uh, you can use that as a community management tool because if you are using yourself as a brand of injury, brand of visual, as you call it sometimes, um, then you can kind of like use your time and uh, use that as a bit of reward too. But you got to be careful with that. You got to make sure you don't lose the brand in that. But uh, it really depends on the company you're working for and whether they're comfortable with that. So just make sure you're, you're checking that out before you start doing this stuff. Okay, so here's a bad contest. The first person to like this gets a free iPad too. So this has happened a lot in the past. Facebook ads do this a lot. Um, people starting new pages, just avoid this stuff. Um, as a community manager, it's just terrible to do in general, and you're not going to get the kind of people you want. You're going to get people looking for free stuff, not people who are actually interested in what your community is doing. So just 
remember when you're making contests your crowdsource content that it has to be of interest to the people you want to get there. So, next part, uh, inspiring questions. So, encourage respectful reflection about the industry or your game or anything in the area which your community is talking about. It keeps the tone of the community forward thinking. It helps people to understand that they have the power to change the world. And I think that's very important because uh, as you're growing a community together, you can build the brand together and come up with great things and they have a stake in it so they can have your success in mind as a brand and they've played a role in it and that means uh, a lot to people that they can help. Um, inspiring, so here's one from the IGTA, which female game developers, game industry folks inspire you? And so a whole bunch of tag, shout outs and they tagging each other, and which is really great because it just brought more conversation in, so that kind of stuff is uh, very helpful. If you want to try that stuff out, feel free. Um, oh, anything that I'm putting on here, feel free to steal all these ideas, please. Um, more than happy to help. Again, tweet at me afterwards or whatever, all links to my Facebook and stuff if you want to ask me questions. And casual and light. So the content when you're creating on social media needs to be casual, light, and fun for the most part. And if it's not, then people will possibly opt out because they're just like, ooh, that's too heavy right now. You've got to be really careful with this. Sometimes heavy works, but um, depending on what your values are for the community you want and the brand and everything like that. So your casual, fun questions give higher engagement. I'm sure you've seen the, the pictures going around on Facebook now, just of silly things of, well, classic thing with cats and things like that, but like the internet is not all about cats, but it's just that stuff works online because people like to get involved in kind of like light fluffy things. Like uh, I heard a great quote about it, people need a range from like Justin Bieber to Einstein, you know what I mean? So they have to be able to have, they can't be full on all the time, so you have to have casual and light as well. It helps the community not take itself too seriously and get too self-involved in balancing casual and serious, and I try to reflect on what life actually is, as I was saying. So here's an example of one. If you could be stuck inside a video game for eternity after death, which game would you pick? And uh, some fun answers came through on that one. Empowerment, next value. So support and celebrate success. So when you see this stuff happening in your computer, in your community, when there's uh, people all going through difficult times, and you can celebrate them, or your community's going through a difficult time, then uh, kind of share that and celebrate successes together. So think big. So find out a person like individual people in your community. Find out their, their big ideas and help them to achieve where possible. What is something you are doing right now that you're proud of? These are kind of questions I would ask. Uh, what would you love to be doing? And so if you can kind of get this out of people and you can find out what they're passionate about and what they're interested in, it's going to help you get them more engaged in your brand and just more generally interested as well as more positive. And that's good because one of the things that's really tough to avoid sometimes in today's world is getting entitled community members. So you got to really watch out for that and kind of push that down when it happens. So this kind of stuff helps to create a tone where entitlement's not welcome. So think big together. What is something you're finding to be a challenge or open-ended questions? Where do you need support? How can I help you to succeed? Um, and I know often your role as a community manager <laughs> is very, very broad, um, and helping people to succeed where it's within brand and within like uh, what is good for your company will really do a lot for you. Social media really thrives on people helping each other. So if you can do that, it's all public and word of mouth spreads because well, that, those guys really helped me out a lot. So if you do that, it'll be great. Support a person's ability to innovate and surprise you. So don't uh, think that your community members are stupid, basically. Uh, think that they can achieve great things and help support them to do those things some positive content. So you can develop Thrive in the New Year. This was uh, some content I created earlier this year for uh, the New Year that I shaved, shaved, shared on the Hero Engine page and it did quite well. Um, timely, that's important, as well as uh, keeping it positive. People shared this quite a, while, quite a bit from the Hero Engine page. But, so none of this matters unless everyone follows through what was discussed. So make sure as you're building this stuff with your community to be sure that you are not making promises you can't keep. So just be sure that you keep your word because people will call you out on it. It looks terrible on your brand, so you just got to be solid on what you're doing. So just be transparent, authentic, and uh, follow through. Basically, it's like being a good person in general. Like, uh, we'll eat a lot, don't be a dick. Yeah, 
So just do good stuff and then it'll come around. So things that I actively work to support in communities, respect, honesty, transparency, friendliness, discussion, interaction, all these things I think are very important to create a positive community. And uh, you will start getting more interest when you do that sort of thing. Things that I absolutely do not support, bias or hate speech towards people. The reason for that is that it leaves people out. Um, a targeted group don't want to have that sort of thing on the head of the brand. It doesn't look good. And it's also just really negative and more people, when new people come, they're going to see that and I'll want to jump in. Banning without a warning or reason. I have a three strike rule that I will like see someone who like does, like maybe they'll do some bias stuff. I will delete that right away. Um, but then I put them on, basically I put them on a list, a digital list that I have and watch out for them for their interactions again. And if they start doing that a second time, then I will warn them. And then the third time, that's it. Um, exclusion of certain users. Um, I won't exclude people without a warning. That's the same as above. And formation of groups who want to exclude others. So you got to watch out in your communities, even on Facebook pages, where there can be people with strong personalities that will come up if they're super active. And you just really got to watch out for these people because they can build communities of their own, like little subgroups within your Facebook feed. So watch out for that. And consistent rudeness. That's just a whole bunch of negativity. And yeah, as you're creating a positive community, just allowing a whole bunch of rudeness all the time. Some people have bad days, I get that. But if they're doing this all the time, I would push them out. I'd talk to them first and then push them out if they're going to be consistently rude to other people in the community. It's just not worth it. And another way to keep things light, humor creativity. So be creative and have fun with what you're doing. People are creative by nature. It encourages thinking in new ways. You can avoid sarcasm, but uh, yeah, instead use humor that targets no particular person or group, but is simply fun. Sarcasm is easily confused online, especially when the audience is from many language backgrounds. Really keep that in mind, where people are coming from. The words you use may not be words that other people use. They may have different meanings. I mean, everybody's meaning of one thing is different than somebody else's. It's just the subtleties in language and everything. Um, so be very careful with that. And uh, so when you do use humor, just make sure it's kind of safe humor in a way. Um, and humor can help deal with sensitive issues in the community. For instance, this is uh, an instance when I had to use that. Not had to, but I thought it was a good tool. Um, during the uh, Fukushima earthquake last year, um, the IGDA in Japan, in Fukushima, a bunch of game developers went up there and had a game jam in front of the nuclear disaster zone. Um, and so they were trying to show that it was a good thing that they're being creative and kind of getting things going again. So it says, Fukushima faces great difficulties in its future. Not only are the scars from the earthquake and tsunami deep and fresh, but the effects of the nuclear disaster will be long felt as well. Game developers will tour the area and build a game together with students from the Toku area. They will create a game in only 30 hours, testing their creativity, talent, and abilities. The theme of the event is fun overcomes difficulty. And organizers said, we're going to show the world that we are going to make it through by showing our enthusiasm and energy. And I think that fun overcomes difficulty is what any brand page could work on. Any community, if you're going to keep things happy and going positively, um, work through things, but keep it light and fun and uh, reward your community where appropriate, of course. So here's a video of that um, that could be shared. I'll leave it up for a moment so you can capture that. Uh, it's just the word Fukushima with GJ at the end, and that just links to the actual video, so you can check that out. Um, I guess I'll just keep moving on though. Leave that for a couple more seconds if people want to catch that. Okay, so let's check the time here. 421. I'm going to be done super early. So I'll have lots of time for questions, I see. Um, so community managers are absolutely essential in the modern customer experience. We have enormous influence in encouraging positive change. So if you you got to believe as a community manager that you can help and do great things um, because as you're leading a community, you have a lot of influence to either affect it with, say, you're having a bad day, it'll come across. Um, you just got to keep things really positive and sometimes that can be work and I absolutely know that. I've been there myself, but uh, you got to just kind of keep going through it and uh, support the positivity of your community, keep things Positive. I'm running out of adjectives here, I guess. 
A summary of foundations for building a positive community. So values, inclusion, welcome new people and ideas, engagement, encourage participation, empowerment, support their success, humor and creativity, do it all with fun, full and balanced life in mind. And so that's it. I got the question spot. So I guess there's lots of opportunity for questions here. Um, if anyone has any, hopefully uh, got the moderator listening in to field them if they're there. Certainly. Um, Ryan, can you also share the link in the chat and then I can uh, broadcast it to the viewers? Yes. Any, any the Game Jam any? one? Yes. Okay. Okay. Chat. Oh, there I see where your message is. Okay, so. Sorry about oh, that. Let me chat here. Okay, and then we'll we'll be proceeding with Q&A from this point forward, so please share your questions in the question pane and we'll address them. I've also just shared uh, the earlier link for you all in the chat pane. Okay, our first question is from Dio Luria. Uh, the question posed is, please expand on what you see entitlement to be and how best to prevent entitlement mindset within a community. Okay, when I'm talking entitlement, I mean the kind of uh, members you see who this can really happen on branded pages for uh, companies where they have lots and lots of fans and if they leave it for a long time without responding to people, people will be like, where's the new update, where's the game, where's the game, blah, blah, blah. Um, that can even happen within uh, large communities that are moderated pretty good, depending on the size. Uh, so that's the kind of entitlement I mean where people are like, gimme, gimme, gimme. And so how to avoid that, I think, is kind of, I would one by one, this is how crazy I am, because I believe, like, I, I, in the end, I don't want to deal with these people over and over and over. So I've done this when I've started pages out, I kind of like set it up. So it doesn't happen this way for coming into a large community. Um, it's going to take some work to uh, kind of like, I will warn these people, I'll send them private Facebook messages and be like, that kind of stuff isn't okay on this page. And I'll kind of, I have the rules already set up, uh, the community rules that uh, like if you're going to be operating on this page, you need to keep stuff in mind. Please keep things positive. Um, we're doing the best we can and appreciate you doing, like getting engaged in this page, but uh, do keep it positive. Um, and I understand that it's not like everything can be positive all the time because that's just not realistic. But uh, just entitlement is one thing I really would want to get rid of in a community because it just does not uh, do well for the company. It looks terrible. It makes you look like you're doing, like just being really slow or, and that may be the truth, I guess, but you just really got to be tight on that stuff. Sometimes I will delete comments if it is the same person coming up over and over and over being like, gimme, gimme, gimme. Um, after I pull them aside, basically and private message them or send them a, a tweet uh, saying that's really, Twitter's not so bad because it doesn't all come in the same feed, but on a Facebook wall, it's really, really easy to see. So I would uh, definitely message them one-on-one -on -one and kind of like, these are the kind of things we're going for in this community. What do you think of these things? Do you buy into this? Because that's really what the values of the company are and the brand. And so if they're not into that kind of stuff, it may not be so great. Um, you can then have instances where these people will go out and be like, I can't believe they did this blah, 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 off of Facebook somewhere else, make a blog article about it. And that can happen. Um, in the end, I think sometimes that's, as a community manager, it's just you just got to be like, Swallow it and let it go. It'd be like, it's better if this person's not involved for everybody else. That's kind of what I would say with that. All right. Josh Caratelli asks, how greatly can negative community management affect a game studio and its publisher? Well, a game studio itself. So if, you're, if you've got a community, let me, okay, so I'm going to call it Gizmodo here because Gizmodo isn't a game company, but their Facebook page is sometimes sharing stuff that isn't super positive. They will call people out and be really rude sometimes and uh, just see that kind of stuff and it really bothers me. And then the interactions, when you set up the kind of content where it's like, wow, this is really stupid or things like that. I'll, I'll share a story here. Okay, so back when I was teaching, um, in my student teaching time, 
I had an incident when I was uh, like maybe like a month in, and I said to the, the students I was teaching, it was a grade eight class, and I said, okay, sorry guys, this is really boring, and so uh, yeah, but we still have to go through this, and so of course it was boring because they expected it to be, right? So I mean, you as the leader of the community are setting up those that emotion built around that content, so you have to not frame things as uh, as this is really stupid or don't you think this is dumb, blah, blah, blah. Keep it on the positive in your framing. Um, so how does that affect negatively if you do that sort of stuff? Well, I mean, you're going to have people leaving. I've left pages for that. I know I'm not the only person who's left Facebook pages because it's just not a nice place to be when you're just like every time you go there and it just feels gross. Um, so how does it affect it? I think it affects your overall brand, the personality of your brand. If you become known for that, like it's just not a great thing to have out there. I, could, uh, I don't know, I'm just not a fan of that sort of thing. I'm trying to figure out how to say that in better words than that. Um, let me see here. So I just think it'll affect the brand negatively. Like having people talk negatively around the brand is only going to affect things negatively. So how it's going to affect their publisher is, uh, so if your game is being published and you're running the Facebook page for your studio and your studio page is really negative, um, then the publisher looks at it and they're like, well, why aren't they taking care of their community? Do they really care about their products? Because um, negativity means that things are, it's like that rusty car. It means you've let things go. And uh, so it's really important. It's, I think it's more work definitely to be positive, but I think it's worth it in the long run um, for everybody. It looks better for the brand. looks better for the publisher if you got one. Um, it looks better for new members coming into your community as well as those who are already there. So. Glenn Franco Berardi asks, how much time do you dedicate to participating in social media? As a solo indie game developer, I'm worried about how effective I can be when I have a bunch of other hats to wear in my business as well. Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah, that's why I all I do is social media stuff for games. And so I uh, sit that on this, like, that's, I spend all my time doing that. So I run that for indie companies as well because I totally understand how much you're trying to do if you're making a game. It's crazy have to wear all those hats. Um, what I would set aside for you, and I'm actually going to be doing an article on this later in a presentation that I have to make up yet that I'll be doing uh, at one point. I'll put a video online on my website stuff, but for specifically indie devs and how they can do this in the most efficient way possible. But I would probably spend, gosh, like any small business, I would spend a good hour a day working on that kind of stuff. Think of it as marketing in general, right? So you're building a community is marketing because you are getting people to care about your product. Um, some of the stuff that you can be doing for this community management hour a day could be like tweeting, not tweeting necessarily things, but like check out my cool game. Uh, please avoid the phrase check out. It makes me crazy, just say it. But um, things like uh, sharing other people's content or kind of uh, doing a blog post around something neat that's going on or taking photos of your desk and area and sharing that with people and asking other people to share their stuff. It's just got to make sure it's not a one-way conversation because people won't get involved in that. There's nothing to get involved with, right? So I would definitely say an hour a day, but uh, yeah, it's going to take some time. I mean, feel free to ping me on Twitter for more ideas and I'll get you some links too on some better stuff, like more detailed stuff about how to do that in the most efficient way possible because it's a small business thing, right? You're wearing so many hats and so it's uh, across industries. It's very similar, especially for a, a very, uh, an indie studio with one or two people or what have you. So. Behrouz Shihari asks, in the starting stages of building an online community, what are some of the most common mistakes or misconceptions you witness? Hmm. Um, Probably the most common, absolutely most common, is when uh, communities just end up talking. Okay, so there's the news feed thing that I talked about, which is terrible. Don't do that. And there is the talking about ourselves all the time thing that is really, really awful. If you want to engage people, engage with people, not around your game. Like share stuff like I was saying around your mission and values for your brand or your company. Um, so like save innovation was one of something that was very important to your brand. You could share news articles on innovation. 
or you could share uh, an image that relates to innovation, something shareable. Um, images work really well, by the way, on Facebook right now. Um, algorithms change all the time on Facebook, but they have consistently always been, if it's got a face in it, it gets preference in the uh, edge rank on Facebook. So keep that in mind if you want to share something, pop a face in it. That's why the faces of the quotes work really well and they come up a lot. Um, but yeah, so if you're, like when communities are starting out, you got to really watch out for that news feed thing and watch out for uh, talking about yourself all the time because nobody is interested in that. Um, and the other tricky thing to do is once you've invited all your friends and family, come like the page if you're an indie developer, like small, get it going, then it's getting beyond that and getting stuck and stopping. Don't stop. What you have to do to get things going more is engage with people. People want to do business with people they know and like, and so you're going to have to go and get more known and liked. And basically, you just have to go talk to people, like be on Twitter and uh, retweet people's stuff. Then after a while, talk to them. I've got a uh, another presentation I can share on Twitter later of uh, where how to do it if you're doing it for a job. But it's very similar because you're sharing information about yourself, which in this case is for a job, but it would be for your company or your game. And uh, it would just be like kind of like soft sell sort of thing. Like first you kind of follow them for a while, figure out what they like, then retweet some of the things that they're doing, um, and then ask them a question on something that's really low level, like uh, they may tweet about, like, here's a picture of my dog. And as much as people say uh, in social media, people don't like talking about that stuff. When you meet somebody, think about at a party, what do you usually end up talking about? It's what they're interested in, what they're passionate about. It's a very human basic things. And uh, yeah, so that's, just think of it as if you're at a party, what you would talk about. Um, so just like that's how you get beyond that barrier. So if you can do that and just engage and keep keep pushing through that wall because it will come, then uh, you're gonna do better. But uh, again, yeah, if you want to ask for advice or anything, you can tweet at me. I'll help you out too as best I can. A quick clarification on that last one. Um, by news feed, do you mean using Facebook's RSS feed or to post news on your site, or do you mean using Facebook to post news? This is posed by Invisible Man. Okay, so if you are a news site, a news website like CNN or whatever, posting news makes sense. If you're not a news website, don't post news and only news. What I mean is if you look at some websites or some Facebook pages where it's just like check out our stuff. Here's our thing. Here's an update. We did an update on a website and it's all like there's a thing called RSS graffiti that a lot of people use as the app or they'll pu publish their Twitter through to Facebook. Um, Twitter and Facebook are different. There's no hashtags on Facebook, for instance. You don't. It's different content. Don't cross post. So if you're doing that, putting all your tweets through to Facebook, that's a news feed. If you're not engaging with your content, that's a news feed. I mean, if your uh, if your content just sits there and it just like goes by and nobody pays attention to it, and uh, it's just links about us, about I don't know, that's what I'm talking about for a news feed. I mean, where you gotta really involve other people. It's social. Um, social means people. So it's, if you talk about yourself, then it will fail. Um, and you need to just keep that in mind. So that's what I mean by newsfeed. It's just kind of like where it's all about us and links from us and things where it goes by. Um, I can give you some examples, but I don't want to call anybody out because it's really bad. Um, yeah, I will tweet an example. If you ask me a question on Twitter, I'll tweet it back to you, but I don't want to say it publicly right now. Yeah, so if that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly fine. Um, our next question is from John Newman. He would like to know, have you been completely stumped, as in a message was lost between yourself and the community, by any cultural differences regarding one of your activities, and how did you deal with it? Yes, and hey, John. I actually know John. I went from Peru when he was in Vancouver, and now he's back in Ireland. So anyways, um, so some things that happen like that, yes, I have definitely been stumped with that sort of thing. Um, when people will come, when I was doing the IGDA, people will come onto the page asking, what is a game? Um, like right from the get-go. And I was just like, okay. So I was like trying to tease that out a bit because maybe they're coming from another place, different culture, different background. And like a game, as I'm sure everyone here knows, can mean a lot of things. Um, so that's just one thing. How I dealt with that was just sharing a Wikipedia entry about what a game is and kind of building a discussion around it. I mean, the best way to talk about this stuff is, well, to talk about it. So, I mean, if you're if you're getting some 
weirdness, and you're just like, I don't understand, ask for clarification. I think that's going to be your best way. I mean, just like, it's okay to not know, right? And so just kind of ask. All right. Tyson Foster wants to know, when interacting with the community, how does it help, or does it help to work with a predictable routine, like posting videos every Monday? Absolutely. It's highly encouraged. Consistency will get you way better results than being inconsistent. Excellent. Uh, Wasson Tronqua wants to know, uh, what channel is the best way to answer questions from players, do announcements, etc. if you have a Facebook game? Should we answer it on the application page, the official game website forum, or? Well, I do believe the Facebook application pages are going away soon. Timelines must be rolled out at the end of uh, this month, on the 28th, rumor says. Um, so then that, those application pages are going to be going. So you're just going to have brand pages. This is what I've heard. Um, I highly recommend following Mari Smith on Facebook or Twitter, M-A-R-I-S-M-I-T-H. She keeps me updated on all this sort of stuff. She's like a Facebook lady. It's really helpful. Um, happy to give her a shout out. But uh, if you're answering questions um, for game-related things, I think if it's going to be a text support question, I would pass it over through the email. If it's going to be a, like a request on, like, I'm stuck, or I don't understand, I would answer that kind of stuff publicly as best as possible um, because then other people can see it's okay. And that would probably be on the Facebook wall of the brand page or the game brand page. So it's depending what you have. Some companies will have a brand page for their game, uh, rather for their studio, but not for their game. In other words, have it for the game and not for the studio. There's lots of different ways you can do it. Um, I honestly think it's better to do it for the studio because then after a new game comes out, you don't have to start from scratch again, frankly. Um, so then the questions would just be on that page and you just kind of check there. There's also um, applications you can get, oh, I'm forgetting the name of it, da, da, da. There, what it is, it's kind of like a, a tab on your Facebook page where it would pass the questions through the Facebook page, like they could ask on, quite, on Facebook and it would pass it through to email. So it would keep everything coming on the download, so to speak. So it's just like if you need help, then you just go to this tab and you ask a question over there. It's really depending on the type of question. Is it? But definitely tech support. I mean, it's it's just kind of like frustrating to do that publicly. I think, um, and uh, so moving that stuff into email is good. Like support at email address dot com or whatever. Um, but if it's uh, yeah, in game tips or whatever, or they need help or like or something buggy or whatever. That's not a tech issue necessarily or whatever. Um, that's probably better to do on the Facebook wall. I mean, for free, because the other one that if you put it in the, the, the special tab there, that costs money, so I'm trying to do it for the cheap, too. Uh, Jeremy Smorgala asks, uh, would it be better to try and create a community for an individual game, or would it be more efficient to try and create a community for your studio covering all games? Studio for all games. That's, yeah, because then that way you're going to get, when you release a new game, you'll have an audience already, an engaged audience, hopefully, if you've been doing things well. Um, if you do it for a new game every time, you're going to get uh, start from scratch. You have to invite people all over again. That's uh, a lot of work. So I would definitely recommend having one for your studio. Um, more than anything, that's going to be the linchpin that holds all your games together. Matthew Tingasasso wants to know, uh, what metrics do you use to defend your ROI, return on investment? Uh, does it look like uh, a like equals a dollar, or what sort of metrics? Well, in the um, uh, the Facebook IPO recently, it's just for interest's sake, each user was valued at $1.32. Um, but the likes are not that. And right now, you don't have to like a page to interact with its content. So likes are not as valuable as they used to be. Um, ROI, frankly, I don't think it's as measurable as some people might like at this point. I'm pretty, like, I'd rather have things be on a soft kind of thing where it's like, are things going better? Like when I was doing a game recruiter, um, I just used Facebook Insights and kind of like watch the trends, what time of day people interacted with things, where they are so I could get their time right, uh, the kind of populations, age groups, and kind of targeted content towards that. Um, and then once you publish that, you just kind of follow that through, and that's basically most of the stuff I'm working with. But what ended up happening, just doing that stuff, I was doing their Facebook and Twitter, and their LinkedIn group grew, like had a bump as well as the number of resumes that they got submitted. So, I mean, it's uh, the ROI, I don't think, is 
as important as some might think it is personally i think it's better to just have a positive community and uh, keep things going like that and things will grow naturally in an organic manner because if you're working with roi only you're going to miss on the important kind of soft community kind of things that are really going to keep things together for the long term and another question from Wasson. Uh, he would like to know if there's any interactions coming from users in a Facebook fan page, um, mostly comments on posts. Uh, he'd like to know if you need to respond to every single comment in order to minimize the unresponsive or uninteractive sort of feel in the user's perspective. I would, yeah. <laughs> it can be a lot of work, but I would. Uh, yeah, I'm a kind of a sucker for that, though. I'll be like... A little bit anal retentive, or I'll just be like, God, there's more. I got to answer them. I totally would. So, because I want to make sure, yeah, just like you're saying, it's got to be interactive and it's got to look like you're listening. You have to be listening to your people. Because if you're not, they're not going to tell you stuff. And they're not going to tell you stuff. And then you got you lose your engagement. So that would definitely be answering them all. Yeah. James Overick wants to know, uh, with a positive community where everyone is talking and having fun, how do you plug your product without saying, Hey, check out my stuff. Um, so you could do something, for instance, like sharing a photo of something going on in your studio. Like we, like okay, so there's different ways you can do it. You can highlight the studio and the people in the studio. People like to know who's working in the studio. Um, so you can highlight neat things that are going on. You could say this is something someone drew today at lunch or things like that. That's fun. That's welcoming. It's easy. But I mean, look how cool you can highlight the art of one of your artists, right? So that that's a great way to. Oops computer fell asleep. Um, but that's a great way to do that sort of thing. But if you are, if you, you'll notice, if you go for fun stuff and getting people engaged, then, you, then you'll then you do check out my thing. There'll be way less engagement on that sort of post. Um, so you have to build that sort of thing, like um, build it around your brand and the values, like I'm saying, because then that way the positive stuff will still be relatable to your brand. And when your stuff does come up, and it's just like, here's some new slides from a presentation we did. And I've had this happen with Hero Engine. Um, there's four shares on that. And it's just like four shares on slides from a business presentation. That's, you know, like that's something that's kind of surprising. Like I was like, wow, that business, like they're good slides and stuff. But, uh, you know, slides aren't super exciting sometimes, right? I mean, <laughs> so it's just uh, stuff comes up and people will be, more interested if they're used to the engagement and to be used to the engagement you have to keep it kind of light and fun and positive and so when you do plug your product um, I wouldn't put it in as plugging your product but kind of like a way to highlight things that are going on in your community and just so happens that your brand is one of those community members as well so highlighting things that uh, your community members doing and then saying we're also doing this kind of thing how would you like to get involved um, things like that where people can, where it's not just like a outward sort of thing where, where you can make it participatory and you'll get better inter interaction. So if it could be like a contest um, where they could submit photos, like I did this uh, class recently for, in a transmedia course for doing this project we came up called Crash My Couch. And so one of the ideas we thought of was like, we wanted to get people submitting pictures of themselves, like basically planking on a couch. Um, so stuff like that where they can get involved, but then they're building content around your brand. So that's, uh, there's lots of different ways you can do it without just saying, check out my stuff. You just kind of got to think beyond the boxes of traditional marketing, I guess. All right. Uh, Emil Nielsen would like to know, what about making your own forums? Is it no longer useful since we have Facebook and Twitter? Mm. Um, they are still useful. Like if you look at uh, their sites, like their new sites have them, like Kotaku's got forums and stuff like that. Well, it's got comments on the feeds and everything. So that would I, I would consider like the kind of same sort of thing. Forums, they're closed though. Like for a big game, like an MMO, um, having a forum is great because it can be, it can cover more technical stuff, right? So passing your stuff over, like there can be uh, just, it's easier. There's no discussion area on Facebook pages anymore. There's, they took that away because they want everything to be on the wall now. But when things are on the wall, then it passes by in the stream and now if somebody asks the same question, they can't search again later, right? So having a forum or a wiki or something like that is really valuable for that sort of thing. Um, it is good. Like I have uh, with the Hero Engine page, I've got people asking questions and then other people answering them for me, and I don't even have to. So 
because it's public, people can do that, right? So it's kind of operating in a forum sort of way, but without having to run the forums and kind of duplicate that content over there. Like I'm a big fan of keeping things public because people can jump in easier, but in the end, Facebook does own your content and it's just part of what it is. So uh, yeah, if you, if you can, like it's just, it's tough to get a tool like Facebook um, in a forum. Um, yeah, I'm just a big fan of social and with the IGDA, you may have heard the forums are terrible. <laughs> and uh, we were planning to move everything over, like when I was there, to get away from forums and get into uh, more social sort of thing. But one of the things that was important was having some sort of app. And there's one being developed. Um, I think it's called Discussion. It was still a couple months ago, still in development. But you could put that on your page and use it as a forums, like a forums tab within your, like it would replace the old Discussions tab that used to be there that they got rid of. Because I think that is important too, because otherwise things just roll by. So. Um, our forum's important. I think the functionality is because it holds things for longer than, this, than the, uh, the roll-by that happens on social media. So, yeah, a little bit of both. Excellent points. Um, Matthew Tengasato would like to know, is there such a thing as engaging too much? I was told once before, yes, uh, that I was too engaging on Twitter. Um, and that stopped and made me laugh for a moment. And I was just like, hmm. Maybe they're right. So I thought about that and then started like treating Twitter a bit more news feedy ish. And then the I was following the, the numbers, the numbers changed and they went down. And I was just like, hmm, is there such a thing as being too engaging? Uh, I'm going to say no, because engagement is what social media preferences. Um, Facebook, when you do stuff with engagement, will give you a higher edge rank. So if you are doing that sort of thing where people can engage with the content and share it and like it, you're going to do better. Um, but yeah, make sure when you're doing your engaging posts not to lose the message along the way. Because you could create like content with images that are shareable and share stuff, but it might be off-brand. I mean, what good is that, right? So I mean, you got to make it engaging but real and fitting. So yeah, I mean, if it's, if you're, like if it's that time of day where you need to share something, because I do I always put a post uh, at 9 a.m., 1 at 5 p.m., or whatever is going to work for your community, check your insights and test. Um, but if you are not, uh, now I forgot what I was saying. Uh, but yeah, so you just got to be able to kind of keep things on brand. And if it's that time of day to post and you don't have anything to post, I usually will tend to go for something like a fill in the blank question, which is still engaging, but it's not like so heavy. Um, as a photo, but it doesn't get as much, when you have stuff like that, it doesn't get preference as much um, in edge rank. So, I mean, it's really, it's battling back and forth. But, I mean, creating content that's engaging all the time is a lot of work. Um, and I know that. So I appreciate it when I see people doing it because I know, like, it takes me a bloody long time to do it. And, uh, yeah, so can it be too engaging? It can be too engaging if it's not meaningful to your brand. Yes. Next question from Beru Shahari. In the early stages of building a community, when replying to each Facebook message or whatever form it takes, is there a danger of appearing to be the only one in a ghost town? How do you combat this? Should a community manager limit the amount of articles they post or share in the early days? Mm, yes. Like basically, so what I do is I will, if I'm creating a new page, I will uh, get some content on there and get like maybe five posts before I publish it. And then I'll invite people in, and it'll take some time. But uh, I would still I wouldn't post anything more than twice a day, two or three. Although this is changing because of the damn timeline at the end of this month, that uh, apparently you can get away with publishing every hour. But I mean, who's got time to create all that content, right? So I kind of stick with twice a day for now until this time when things roll out, and I'll see what my insights are like and shake my fist at Facebook yet again. Um, but if you're doing that kind of thing, yeah, you got to be careful. But um, just got to keep plugging away at it and kind of like move beyond your the one Facebook and like kind of like bring people over and like tell people on Twitter that there is Facebook here. And as you're creating engaging content, one of the best things right now is the sharing photos kind of thing that are going to be on brand. And sharing that, that's kind of the best way to, to bring in um, new people. So if you're in the early stages, I would suggest doing that. So there's four minutes left with one more question, short answer. Okay, I'm ready. All right, Matthew Tangasantos again. For people looking to do community development professionally, what kinds of items would you recommend to tout in a portfolio? Ooh, 
if you've ever run any sort of community or forum or just like organized people and help lead people than anything like that. Um, like I got into this from being a teacher. So that kind of helps. It was a very natural fit. So I mean, there's lots of ways to do community management, lots of ways to get into it. So if you can uh, kind of show off that you do good things with people offline or online, I think that's a great way to highlight your skills.